ट्वेल्थ बायो बॉटनी पार्ट फाइव चैप्टर फोर प्रिंसिपल्स एंड प्रोसेस ऑफ बायोटेक्नोलॉजी अंडर द पार्ट टूल्स फॉर जेनेटिक इंजीनियरिंग टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट कंपिटेंट होस्ट एंड द मेथड्स ऑफ जीन ट्रांसफर in recombinant dna technology the plasmid or vector is combined with gene of interest or foreign dna this is foreign dna or gene of interest it is combined with the vector vector is a carrier to form or dna recombinant dna the recombinant dna cannot replicate outside the host cell it cannot make a copy of itself outside the living cell outside the living cell the or dna cannot produce protein product so we have to transfer this or dna into the host cell when the or dna is inside the host cell it can replicate and the protein product of the foreign gene will be expressed now we have understood why do we transfer or dna into the host cell e coli yeast animal or plant cells are used as host cells the type of host cell depends on our purpose the type of host cell depends upon the cloning experiment this is e coli this e coli bacterial cell is most widely used host cell it has been studied well for the safety its genetic makeup has been studied well it divides faster it can be cultured easily this or dna is transferred into host cell for that e coli is most widely used the reasons are its genetic makeup has been extensively studied it is easy to handle and grow it can accept a range of vectors different kinds of vectors can be accepted by this host we have already learned different vectors in the previous videos e coli has the capacity to take in different range of vectors it also has been studied for safety the cells divide every 20 minutes one generation completes in 20 minutes because of this reason e coli is most widely used host cell the host cell has to take up the or dna recombinant dna has to be taken up by the host cell that cannot occur automatically because the host cell has cell membrane that is made up of two layers of lipids dna is a hydrophilic molecule dna is a hydrophilic molecule the cell membrane of host cell has two layers of lipid the dna cannot pass through the cell membrane the cell membrane has two layers of lipid this is one layer this is another layer each lipid layer has hydrophilic head hydrophilic head and dna is hydrophilic but the tail of the lipid layers are hydrophobic the dna cannot pass through the hydrophobic tail region of cell membrane so we have to make the bacterial cell to take up dna we have to make we have to do something on the cell so that it will take up the foreign dna 
the cell is treated with divalent cation calcium ion treatment this is a e coli cell the cell is treated with cacl2 that makes the cell membrane permeable to the or dna so after divalent cation treatment the host cells and or dna's are incubated together cultured together on ice first two step is divalent cation treatment then the cells are incubated with ice the cells as well as or dna are incubated on ice then temperature is increased heat shock is given for a short time and then putting them back on ice divalent cation treatment then the cells and or dna are mixed together on ice then heat shock again on ice this treatment makes the host cell take in the or dna the or dna moves inside after this treatment so our dna mode this enable the bacteria to take up recombinant dna so this is how to make the host bacterial cell to take up the or dna we have to make the bacterial cell to take up the or dna by this procedure for the expression of eukaryotic proteins eukaryotic cells are preferred so e coli is prokaryotic cell if we want human protein or animal protein eukaryotic cells are preferred prokaryotic cells also produce human protein or animal protein when the protein is formed it is made up of linear chain of amino acids this is primary structure in eukaryotes the primary structure undergoes folding to form a secondary structure of protein tertiary structure of protein and then quaternary structure due to further folding quaternary structure is produced now the protein is functional protein prokaryotic cells also produce human protein or eukaryotic protein but the folding is impossible so for the expression of eukaryotic proteins eukaryotic cells are preferred as host cells to produce a functionally active protein it should be folded properly and post translational modification should occur what is translation the mrna based on the information of mrna protein is produced that is translation after, after translation primary structure is formed this changes secondary structure tertiary the folding further folding is called as post translational modification after post translation modification only the protein becomes functional this is not possible by prokaryotic cells like e coli so we have to prefer eukaryotic cells for the expression of eukaryotic proteins there are different methods of gene transfer here this is a vector foreign dna is combined with vector it is gene of interest what is gene of interest if we know the function of one gene that is called as gene of interest gene of interest is combined with vector so the vector must carry gene of interest into the host cell so vector carries gene of interest into the host cell if we have to get the protein of this foreign dna or gene of interest two more things are necessary for achieving genetic transformation in plants we are discussing about gene transfer method in plants for achieving genetic transformation in plants the vector must contain gene of interest so here gene of interest is present in the vector number 2 controlling sequences should be present in the vector here sequence means adenine guanine thymine cytosine arrangement promoter and terminator are controlling sequences promoter is a dna sequence that starts mrna synthesis terminator is a dna sequence that starts mrna synthesis 
If promoter and terminator are absent, mRNA will not be produced. The formation of mRNA is called as transcription. If mRNA is produced, then mRNA will be translated into protein. For that, promoter, terminator sequences are necessary. So, a vector must carry these sequences in addition to the gene of interest. Then only the protein product of foreign gene or gene of interest will be expressed in the plant. There are two kinds of gene transfer method in plants. If vectors are used, that is indirect method. Direct or vectorless gene transfer, indirect or vector mediated gene transfer. These are the two types of gene transfer methods. Now let us see the first method, direct or vectorless gene transfer. Chemical mediated gene transfer, chemicals are used to facilitate the uptake of foreign DNA by host cells or micro injection. The DNAs are injected into the host cells or electroporation method. Openings are created on the cell membrane by means of electrical field to facilitate gene transfer. Liposomes are used. Liposomes are lipid structure made up of phospholipids. They are used to facilitate gene transfer. Our gene gun is used. Biolistics or gene gun is used to transfer foreign gene into the plant cells. Chemical mediated gene transfer. This is a first method or first direct method. Certain chemicals induce uptake of DNA into protoplast. What are protoplast? We know that the outermost part of plant cell is cell wall. If we remove the cell wall, the remaining structure is protoplast. A plant cell without cell wall is called as protoplast. Certain chemicals induce uptake of DNA into the protoplast. Up DNA uptake into the plant protoplast is done by some chemicals like polyethylene glycol PEG and dextran sulfate. Dextran sulfate and PEG facilitate the uptake of DNA into the protoplast. What is protoplast? A plant cell without cell wall. The second direct method micro injection. This is a cell, this is nucleus. First, the cell is fixed in a position. In the diagram, the cell is fixed in a particular position by pipette, micro pipette. Here, air is sucked. Air is sucked, so cell is fixed. Or the cell is kept on slide, microscopic slide, by using agarose gel. After fixing the cell, DNA is injected through micro pipette or micro syringe. The DNA is directly injected into the nucleus. Directly injected. So this is direct method using fine tipped glass needle or micro pipette to transform plant cell. The protoplast are immobilized on a solid support by means of agarose on a microscopic slide. This is agarose gel. We will discuss later about gel electroporosis. This agarose gel is used to fix the host cell on microscopic slide or the host cells are kept with a holding pipette under suction. This is holding pipette. Air is sucked. So cell is fixed without any movement. The cell is kept in a particular position by holding pipette or agarose on microscopic slide and then DNA is directly injected with the help of fine tipped glass needle or micro pipette. The next direct method is electroporation method. The cell membrane is a two, uh, lipid bilayer membrane. The middle part is hydrophobic tail. DNA is hydrophilic. So DNA cannot pass through. So by using electrical field, 
temporary pores are created when we apply electrical pulse a hole opening is created the opening is surrounded by hydrophilic head hydrophilic head surround the opening so dna can pass through the opening and gets into the cell when we stop the electrical field again the opening is closed this is a cell before applying electrical pulse when we apply electrical pulse the electrical charges inside the cell and outside the cell gets changed the electrical field causes temporary opening and inside here the highly positive so negatively charged dna gets into the cell then you stop the electrical field the openings are closed <coughs> a pulse of high voltage is applied to protoplasm cells or tissues which makes transient pores in the plasma membrane through which uptake of foreign dna occurs another direct method is liposome mediated method <coughs> liposomes are artificial lipid bilayer structures like small vacuole liposomes are artificial vesicles <coughs> like normal cell membrane these liposomes have two layers of lipid the dna is packed inside the liposome the dna is wrapped are encapsulated inside the liposome this is liposome dna is encapsulated the liposome forms a capsule around the dna dna will come here liposomes are artificial phospholipid vesicles vesicles are small vacuoles used for the delivery of dna the dna is delivered now what is formed liposome dna complex they can be preloaded with dna forming dna liposome complex this diagram shows dna liposome complex this is called as lipoplex dna liposome complex is called as lipoplex the lipoplex fuses or joins on the surface of cell membrane then moves into the cell and then joins with the membrane of vacuole then the lipoplex opens the dna escapes out and enters into the nucleus this complex fuses with the cell membrane of target cell and fuses with the vacuole and then release the content into the cell then the content content means the dna then the dna moves into the nucleus <coughs> this is dna the dna is packed in cell liposome to form lipoplex the lipoplex joins on the surface of cell membrane this is cell membrane the cell membrane forms folding and covers the lipoplex the cell membrane covers the lipoplex now the dna is covered with two layers one is lipoplex another one the membrane this structure is called endosome the moment of lipoplex into the cytoplasm through cell membrane is called endocytosis we have already discussed we have learned endocytosis in 9th standard and 11th standard the lipoplex fuses on the surface then the cell membrane forms folding infolding and surrounds the lipoplex and form endosome the endosome matures and joins with lysosome the lysosomal enzymes break the endosome and the dna will escape sometimes lysosomes break the dna also in plant cells the endosome joins with vacuole the mature endosome breaks and the dna escapes the escaped dna moves into the nucleus what's the advantages of this liposome liposomes protect the dna and liposomes carry the dna two advantages The liposomes protect the introduced DNA from being damaged by the acidic pH and protease enzymes present in the vacuole. So protection. Second one, liposomes and toneoplastic vacuole fusion results in gene transfer.
the membrane of vacuole is tronoplast the liposome joins with vacuole membrane tronoplast and then the liposome opens the dna escapes and enters the nucleus so the joining of liposome and vacuole membrane tronoplast results in gene transfer these are the two advantages of liposomes this process is called lipofection what is lipofection transfer of foreign dna into the cell by means of liposome is called as lipofection lipofection is a technique used to inject genetic material into a cell by means of liposomes this is a liposome insert dna is present the cell membrane folds the black line represents cell membrane the cell membrane in circles now this is endosome endosome matures and opens the dna escapes and the dna enters into the nucleus in this way gene is directly transferred without any vector dna is dra directly transferred by using a technique biolistics uh, or gene gun or micro projectile gun or shotgun this is shotgun dna is coated on gold particles or tungsten particles here the dna is coated on gold particle these particles are delivered into the cell by using gene gun as the particles move the dna also moves into the cell the dna coated particles are bombarded into the plant cells by gene gun this is gene gun and this uh, red color structure is plastic disc where dna coated gold particles are attached dna coated gold particles are attached on this plastic disc here a screen what will happen a high temperature is created water is boiled the water vapor flows with high speed there moves the plastic disc through the holes the microscopic particles carrying dna move with high speed and enter into the plant cells when the plant cells containing foreign gene are cultured to produce new plant the plant will be a genetically modified plant because it has foreign gene in all the cells the foreign dna is coated on to the surface of minute gold or tungsten particles and bombarded on to the target tissue or cell using particle gun or gene gun or micro projectile gun or shot gun then the bombarded cells or tissues are cultured on selected medium to regenerate plants from the transformed cells they are transformed cells because foreign dna is injected into the cells these cells are cultured to regenerate plants in this way genetically modified plants are produced now we have discussed various kinds of direct transfer of genes in the next video we shall discuss about vector mediated or indirect transfer of genes into the host cells